This is the Avermedia Live Streamer webcam. It's what I like to call a Costco special. Now, you might know that I did a video a little while back comparing a super cheap $50 Amazon webcam with the built-in camera on the MacBook Air. I'll link that video down below for you. But to summarize, the cheap webcam actually was quite a bit better than Apple's built-in camera on the MacBook Air. I'm sure that's no huge surprise. However, it failed in one major area, and that is the autofocus was horrendously active and very, very annoying to say the least. That made it so that I really could not use it as my daily driver. So my quest continues to find, is it possible to get a cheap and decent webcam? Well, we're about to find out. With that said, thanks for joining another Technology Paul episode. Here's my quick reminder. If you're enjoying the video at any point today, click that like button for me and it helps the channel and it helps more people see this video. Okay, let's get started and open up this camera. All right, here's a look at the Avermedia live streamer webcam. Let's unbox it. So a couple things to point out here. Uh, it says full 1080p, 360 degree swivel design. Also dual mic, uh, which could be good. And a privacy shutter, which I think is a good addition in this day and age. Uh, one little note here as well, is you'll notice that it actually says adjustable focus, it's fixed focus. So that's one of the things that I want to focus on in this video, pun intended, and take a look and see if that causes an issue or not. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, quick start guide. A little bit of a step-by-step uh, -step here. Here we go. Pretty straightforward. Got the adjustable hook here to hook it onto your computer monitor. It's got the swivel design, as I mentioned, privacy shutter. And it's got the dual microphone. Let's hook it up. Okay, now it probably won't surprise you too much here, but I wanted to point something out. I am using this webcam right now. The thing that is pointed at me right now recording this video is this Avermedia live streamer webcam. So my initial impression is it's actually pretty decent. It's definitely, definitely worthwhile. <laughs> compared to uh, the MacBook Air camera, okay? Let me just show you and remind you what the MacBook Air camera looks like right now. This right here is the MacBook Air camera. Yes, believe it or not, this is the MacBook Air camera, the thing that ships with your MacBook Air. It actually looks exactly like this. It's super grainy in the low light situations. And I mean, this office is fairly well lit, but I'm talking about it's nighttime. We don't have direct sunlight on my face. If you have the perfect conditions, this camera actually looks okay, actually. However, most of the time, most people are not gonna have perfect conditions. A lot of us are working from home. We're working in our basements. We're working in the corner of the room or something like that. And so we're just not gonna have the perfect conditions, Apple. You gotta ship a better webcam in the MacBook Air. Now I've heard that the new MacBook Airs 
with the M1 processor have better image signal processing. Therefore, the image should be less grainy, but that's no excuse. I've got a 2020 MacBook Air with an Intel chip in it, but look at this. This is what you get, okay? Now, you'll notice something interesting, and I'll flip over, okay? Take a note of, of sort of the colors and everything like that that you get, and the lighting, okay? The level of shadow and things like that, okay? Because I'm gonna switch it back over to the Aver live streamer here. Okay, check it out. So what do you notice right away? Other than what appears to be a crystal clear image, which I think is phenomenal, that's great. But the other thing you might notice is the shadows and the lighting, right? You'll notice how much darker my sweater is in this live streamer camera than it was on the MacBook Air. So that's really interesting. I think that uh, this is clearly bringing out the shadows quite a bit more. And I am no camera expert, but that's something that even I noticed right away. Now, I don't think it's a bad look by any means. I just think it's interesting to, to call out. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this camera, and I mentioned this during the unboxing portion, is that it's a fixed focus camera, unlike the camera that I shared with you, the Amazon camera that I shared the other day, this camera does not have autofocus. So what that means is uh, you may have at some points, uh, some things may be out of focus, for example, because it's not going to adjust or automatically focus here. So let's test it with these uh, Jabra headphones I've got here. Okay, you can see here that if I bring it right up to the camera, it's just not quite in focus. And that is because it's really meant to focus in on a certain focal length away from the camera. And that's really best for folks who are trying to look good on their Zoom calls, or and this is called a live streamer, so folks who are trying to look good live on stream if they're streaming uh, video games or something like that. So that's something that is interesting to call out, that it is just fixed focus. I will tell you, I greatly prefer that look. Okay, I really, really do prefer that look, and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna switch back over to the Amazon web camera that I bought for $50 on Amazon a few weeks back. It's called a Jellycomb, is the name of the brand. I'm gonna switch over to that camera right now and show you what I'm talking about with this autofocus thing. All right, and this right here is the Jellycomb $50 Amazon camera that I purchased a few weeks back. And as you can see, the, the sort of framing of the shot is a little bit different. It's maybe a bit wider of a shot, but as you can see, it's also got autofocus, which to be honest with you, I, I'm not moving up and down the plane of the image and yet, it's still, you know, autofocusing quite a bit and it can get really annoying, not only for me, but anyone I might be on a Zoom call with or something like that. And I can go great lengths of time being completely out of focus because it just will refuse to get back into focus. So as you can see, just me talking a few moments here, it's already sort of shifted focus at least three to four times. So that's been something that has just been basically the deal breaker for this cheap Amazon camera because the quality is pretty good. It's, I would say, close to the quality of the Avermedia camera. I do think that the Avermedia sort of edges this camera out just a little bit, but at the same time, this Jellycomb camera would totally be acceptable if it didn't constantly switch focus and change focus. And now you can see I'm completely out of focus here. You can't see me at all. You probably think there's something wrong with your eyes or you need to adjust your glasses or something like that. And now we're back here and it just switched again. That's the problem with this camera, the one and only problem, but it's a massive problem. So really there you have it. This is meant to be a fairly quick video comparison here and just meant to showcase the differences here. You know, you've got your built-in MacBook camera, which again, I, I really don't recommend. You know, at the end of the day, unless you're in really good lighting conditions all the time, it's just a bad look. You know, you might be able to get away with it for work, but at the 
end of the day, it is nice, okay? If we're gonna be working from home for an even more extended period of time here, I really recommend that you upgrade your camera. It's a really good option and it's really easy to do. Is, is just get a cheaper webcam. And I think that I have found a webcam that is both reasonably priced and decent. Now I realize that this is not going to be as good of a camera as some of the higher end, you know, Logitech cameras, for example, but those run around two to 250 and sometimes up to $300. If you're looking for something a little bit on the lower priced end here, this live streamer camera costs about $89 at Costco. That's a great deal in my opinion. And so it's definitely could be worth picking up there as well. And so with all that said, I really appreciate you checking out the video today. And please, if you enjoyed the content here, just click that like button for me. It definitely helps the channel tremendously. And if you want to see more from Technology Paul, just click that subscribe button.